Well met everyone, I am Rich the Lich. And today's video is going to have a list of 100 various types of media. So mostly it's gonna be video games, movies, and written material, so books and comic books and so on. And why 100? Well, I recently reached 100 subscribers. And I know there's folk out there on the YouTube as PewDiePie and such that are celebrating 10 million subscribers and 100 million subscribers. For me, 100 subscribers says a lot. I'm extremely grateful, I'm extremely thankful, and I'm extremely proud and appreciative of all of your, most importantly, the time that you have donated to watching my videos and hearing me talk and ramble. So thank you, thank you so much. I thought when I reached 100 subscribers, and I knew this going into it, I was never searching and seeking out the numbers. Yes, I'm appreciative of them, but I create the content simply because I feel like I just have some thoughts and ideas and experiences that I want to share. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Hopefully, you've been entertained along the process, and maybe you've learned a little bit of something that you can take with you to just help make your passion and your creative efforts better. So I thought, why not put a list up of 100 things. There's no particular order here. I'm not gonna list them in any sort of order of the video games come first followed by the movies. I'm not gonna list them in any order of importance or the level of impact they had on my creative juice, so to speak. I'm just gonna ramble through 100 things that I came up with very quickly. I typed them out. Sure, there's gonna be some things here you don't agree with. There's gonna be many things that I left out. There's gonna be many things that influenced me greatly that I didn't put on the list because I just simply didn't think of them right now. I'm also not gonna talk through them with any level of detail and depth because with 100 things, if I even spent 30 seconds on each one, this is gonna be an hour long video. So hopefully something here resonates with you a little bit. It, it sparks some creative juice with you. If you were to delve into any of this media, I would recommend looking into the movies first because quite simply, you can just spend a couple of hours and that's it. You've digested the movie, you got the gist of it, and it's done. A book, a few days to a week. Some of these video games, I'll, I'll mention World of Warcraft. I've been playing that for the better part of 15 years and there's still aspects of that game that inspire me and spark creativity and whatnot. But these are all things in some capacity, 90% of them at least, so a good 90 out of the 100. I've watched, I've read, I've delved into these video games, I've played them through and through. But there's a few things on the list here that are on the back burner of things that I need to get to as well. These are things that have been recommended to me by those that I greatly value their input creatively or their friends and things like this. So not everything here have I experienced myself, but these are the things that I want to get into or I already have. I also want to say a huge thank you to, I think his name is Heavy Arms. I don't even know if you're a subscriber. I don't know if you're even going to watch this video. I'm not sure how you found my creative efforts and my channel of All Things Lich, but I have a Patreon out there. It's patreon.com forward slash All Things Lich and Heavy Arms donated generously to my Patreon and here is my first Patreon, so I'd like to, or patron, I should say. He's my first patron. I want to just say thank you very much if you happen to be watching this video for your generous contribution and basically buying me a cup of coffee every month and just helping contribute and believing that what I've offered already is worth something to you and that you wish to donate your hard earned money towards my efforts. So let's jump into this list, okay? At the top is my favorite movie of all time Braveheart. Number two is Gladiator. This is the movie with Russell Crowe. Number three is John Wick. Number four is Born Identity. Number five is Saving Private Ryan. If we look at those three, John Wick, Born Identity, and Saving Private Ryan, we are looking at things that I think create a good sense of what it's like to be in battle, in combat. Yes, I know, obviously, if we're talking D&D, &D, we're looking more fantasy versus the gunplay of a Born Identity and a John Wick, but just sort of the intensity and maybe even downloading the soundtrack and playing those during your game, they can really spark some fuel for how to create a real compelling combat and you know situation and encounter. Number six is Lady Hawk, a very old movie with, um, what was his name? I don't remember his name. It doesn't matter. Number seven is Dragon Slayer. Number eight is the Lord of the Rings cartoon. Number nine is Flight of Dragons, an awesome, I think, 1980s-ish animated, phenomenal. Watch that movie. 
Number 10 is the Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings stuff. And I didn't mention it, but The Hobbit as well. So everything by Peter Jackson's in, in that regard, the movies. Number 11 is the Vikings TV show. Number 12 is, of course, the Game of Thrones TV show. And therefore, number 13 is A Song of Ice and Fire, the book by the book series by George R.R. R. Martin. Number 14 is the Crystal Shard Trilogy. These are books by R.A. Salvatore. And I believe the first book was Crystal Shard, second was Streams of Silver, and third was Halfling's Gem. Salvatore has written, I don't know, 40 books by now at least. So look into R.A. Salvatore for really good content. That's very specific to D&D because he's, he kind of created Menzo Baranzan and Driz Jordan and you know really delved into the northern part of Forgotten Realms and stuff. Number 15 is another book called The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. Number 16 is The Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. That's another book. Number 17 is another book series, The Name of the Wind, The King Killer Chronicles, I think, by Patrick Rothfuss. Number 18 is The Dark Tower series by none other than Stephen King himself. Number 19 is the movie, The Dark Crystal. Number 20 is the movie, The Goonies. Number 21 are the movies, Star Wars, all of them. Everything from original to, what is, uh, not Last Jedi, whatever. All of it, everything, even the spinoffs, so Rogue One and Solo and all this other stuff. Number, where am I at? 22, Spawn. I'm talking about the HBO. I think there was an HBO TV series. I did not delve into all of that, but I did watch the Spawn movie. And then, of course, just the comic book series by none other than Todd McFarlane. So that kind of sparked something for me real quick. Not only are these things you should delve into... If you've watched any of my videos, you've maybe seen some patterns and habits where I talk about what I'm fascinated by. What I am enamored by is delving into the behind the scenes of the making of. So not only just the making of how did Peter Jackson and Weta Digital and all of them make Lord of the Rings, but when I get into, like I'll mention H.P. Lovecraft, or when I hear in this case, obviously I'm talking about Todd McFarlane. I've watched almost every documentary or YouTube video. I love getting into the creative process of how something was made. And if it's an individual, I love getting into their mindset. What were they thinking? And I think when you take someone that has created and published, Stephen King, for example, reading about what made him a writer and what are his habits and patterns, in the journey of writing my own novel, I am never going to pretend that I'm any Stephen King. I mean, few people on the planet are. I love getting into their creative process because I try and find some links, some similarities of, you know what? The way he navigates his way through this writing is the same process I go through. But then I find those little disconnects that I have that he's overcome that allowed that individual to create and produce something, a finished product. And I think that's the separator between those that do and those that don't. So I love delving into the behind the scenes on all of these things. How did they make that? What did they think of? What was the director thinking? What were the actors like during, you know, what are the interviews with Mark Hamill and, and Harrison Ford during the filming of Star Wars? And I think you can learn just as much, not just from the finished product, but learn just as much from the process as well. And they can help you as they have for me wrangle through your own process and figure out where your disconnect and where your gap is and where you where is sort of your obstacle and stopping point that Steven Spielberg got through that allowed him to create and finish the movies that we all love okay so spawn is a big one and following McFarlane Another one where not just the content that was produced, but the individual, number 23 is The Sandman by Neil Gaiman and everything that he has written as an author and just understanding a little bit of his process and what he goes through to allow him to create the cool things he has. Number 24 is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. Number 25 is the video game World of Warcraft. 26 is the video game EverQuest. 27 is the video game Skyrim. We've got a few video games coming up here. Number 28 is Fallout 3. Number 29 is Baldur's Gate 2. Number 30 is Half-Life. 31 is Half-Life 2. Number 32 is Quake 2. Number 33 is Doom, both the old original John Carmack, founder of shooters types thing, and the most recent newer version of Doom, where it just play that soundtrack and it just gives you that instant urgency and just rage, especially with like an Avernus or fighting in hell or something like that. Number 34 is the video game StarCraft and its expansion Brood War. 35 is the video game StarCraft 2. More video games here. 36, Warcraft 3. 37, Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite. 38, 
all of the Zelda games. Just look into all of them, play them all. 39 is the video game Kaboom. It was one of my favorites as a kid, and it's just constant reminder for me of just how something can just be purely made for fun. Just enjoy it. Number 40 is the Street Fighter and the Mortal Kombat series, all of them. Number 41, we're looking at some, now we're going into some books again. Number 41 is the stories of Elric of Melnabone, based on Michael Moorcock, I believe. Number 42 are the Dresden Files books, with uh, Jim Butcher, I think, is the author. Number 43 is, there's a bunch of books here and a bunch of authors. Everything by Robert Jordan, I think his name is, Terry Brooks, Terry Pratchett, Discworld, um, I forget the name of the book by uh, Terry Brooks, but look up all that stuff. Number 44 is the Narnia world. So whether you're looking at the movies or the books, C.S. Lewis and whatnot. Number 45 is delving, no pun intended, down deep into the hole of Alice in Wonderland. Number 46, watch and digest everything by Pixar. Most importantly, though, with Pixar, look at their behind the scenes. I talked about that just a moment ago of how valuable that stuff is. Start finding some articles and there's some amazing stuff out there. Maybe I'll create a video on it if you guys want me to. Just kind of comment on Pixar's storytelling process. As a dungeon master, I'm a storyteller. And very few have done it as well as Pixar. So look into all that stuff. Not just watching the movies, as I said, understanding what their process was in creating that movie and how they came up with that idea. Number 47, of course, is Harry Potter, whether the movies, everything by J.K. Rowling, the books themselves, and so on. Number 48 are the books of A Wizard of Earthsea, so Ursula Le Guin. Number 49, delving into not just the works of H.P. Lovecraft, but also just him as a person and the mind. So even if these things just turn into a quick Google search on every one of these books, games, movies, people, delve into that. Understand the process of creation and what they thought through, because you might find some similarities and, as I said, be able to link some things up and create some cool content. Number 50, one second, excuse me. This stuff is bad for you. Is Conan. I'm talking about Robert E. Howard stuff. And of course, Arnold's movies and whatnot. Aliens, the movies. Terminator movies. Terminator 1, 2 especially. The movie Pumping Iron. I'm on a real big Arnold Schwarzenegger kick. Not lately, but just in general. I think just the success and the discipline and the work ethic, it informs a lot to me and it has helped me grow just as a human being, which I think the better you become as a person, the more you can offer as a creative individual as well. Next, look at everything by the individual David Blaine, the magician, the street magician, the, you know, what is it, survival, crazy feats of magic. So everything by David Blaine. That could also transition into Houdini, which was a huge influence on David Blaine as well. And Yes, I know I'm talking about media, but there's books on David Blaine. There's TV series and movies and things like that, documentaries on David Blaine. So look into that stuff. Number 55 is the movie The Princess Bride. Number 56 is an individual, but there's movies that go with this. Bruce Lee, similar to Pumping Iron and the inspiration of Arnold as a person. Just the success and the motivation and inspiration of Bruce Lee in and of itself. And that can take you down the road of, you know, sort of a lot of these things can springboard into other things of... You know, the the original Kung Fu movies, the, you know, ah, yes, <laughs> why, you know what I mean? Those type of things that are dubbed over. But I remember trying to create that vibe and ambiance of, do you remember the original, not the original, but the Batman that started with Christian Bale and I think Liam Neeson and he's in the snow and he's looking for the blue flower and they go up to that monastery. I created something with that plus the things that were influenced by the kung fu movies and the martial arts movies of bruce lee and also the ones where they're dubbed over the crazy you know chinese kung fu guys are flying around in circles and stuff like this and that was the spark and all i needed to create a really compelling cool situation in a role-playing game in D D, where the pcs were going up to this like monk monastery so you can find inspiration everywhere so bruce lee Number 57, the Malazan Book of the Fallen. I think that that whole written series. Number 58, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, where you can delve into some of the older movies with Gene Wilder, I think, but you can also just read the book itself. From a strong horror element, especially when you delve into the behind the scenes of what she wrote for its time, there was a lot of taboo stuff there. So you can get a lot from that in sort of mystery and, and superstition and cults and what people are thinking and believing and so on. Number 59 is the entire Witcher video game series and the books as well. 
Number 60 is Borderlands 2. Number 61 is the Diablo series. 62 is the Gauntlet video game. 63 is the video game Dragon's Lair. 64, similar to the Kung Fu thing I mentioned, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, the movie. 65 is the movie Avatar. Number 66 are the video games like Sekiro and Bloodborne, you know, the Dark Souls, Demon Souls series. 67 is the Ultima series of video games. 68, old school video games, The Pool of Radiance. SSI, I think, was the company. Pool of Radiance, Curse of the Azure Bonds. That was the first time that I really took like D&D and saw it in video game form. 69 was Knights of the Old Republic, the video game. 70 is the Star Wars Old Republic MMO by BioWare. 71 are the adventure series games similar to like Zork. 72, video games again. This video game's here for a little while. Is the Dragon Age series. 73 is the Mass Effect series. 74 is the God of War series. 75 is the Gears of War series. 76 are all these sort of stealth influence games like Splinter Cell, Deus Ex, Assassin's Creed, Metal Gear Solid. Also the detective and investigative work of the Arkham Asylum type games, the Batman series. 77 is Left 4 Dead. 78 are the wonderful adventure story driven cinematic games like Last of Us and Uncharted by Naughty Dog. 79 is the open world games, the GTA series, the Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2. Number 80, really good for puzzlers, is Portal. Kind of get your mind thinking in a different way, running through the dungeons and overcoming obstacles and traps and tricks and stuff like that. Number 81 is Halo. 82, the juggernaut, of course, Minecraft. Just the ability to build and create a world in and of itself. 83, we're back to some TV and movie stuff here. 83 is the TV, the TV show Stranger Things. 84, Back to the Future. 85, everything from DC and the MCU, so the Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? There's too many to list. You can go into Doctor Strange, the Iron Mans, the Avengers movies, all that stuff. 86, The Matrix trilogy and series, but especially number one. 87, Ghostbusters, the original. Uh, Bill Murray, right? Dan Aykroyd. 88, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, of course. It has that element of obviously the fantastical or, you know, fantasy, medieval, I should say, but... Just elements of humor and reminding us, smile and have fun, man. 89, the Inception movie. I think that was the same guy that did the original Batman Dark Knight. I forget the, the director's name. 90, Blade Runner, original. 91, Tron. 92, Jurassic Park. Yes, there's a whole Lost World and all the new stuff with the guy who plays Star-Lord in um, Guardians of the Galaxy. But I'm talking the original Jurassic Park. And also you can delve into Michael Crichton, I think, was the author of the, the books. 93, Jaws. That thing, other than Exorcist, are the two that scared the shit out of me as a kid. They bring a strong horror element to all of it. Even though Jaws, you might not think, is a really, you know, the ring, you know, exorcism of Emily Rose type of horror. Jaws was scary as hell. And if you're doing anything aquatic, Ghost of Saltmarsh, Jaws is a good thing to kind of... It can really scream to you a little bit. 94 is Labyrinth, the movie. 95, the movie Stargate. 96, both the movie and the book, Frank Herbert's Dune. 97, you can, of course, delve as much as you want into the Star Trek TV series and all the different movies and whatnot. 98, another fun one, Spaceballs. 99 is The Crow with Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee. And 100 is the Planet of the Apes, whether you look all the way back to, I think it was the 60s, or I really love the more modern stuff where I started delving into, again, getting into the behind the scenes, Andy Serkis, and the fact that he was the motion capture guy behind Gollum. And he has become the legend of motion capture work, where he's now cre be the, his own director and his own full-fledged actor. He was uh, Snoke, I think, Emperor Snoke or whatever, in The Last Jedi, I think. But Planet of the Apes, he's played as Caesar and whatnot. So when you delve into the behind the scenes of that, it gives you a good vibe if you're ever playing into sort of a, a jungles area or beast-like as a DM. If I can emulate the way Andy Serkis looked when he had all those little motion capture orbs and balls on him, I can emulate that. So aside from just the movie itself, you see how things like that sort of really scream to you and help inform you creatively and artistically when you look at the behind the scenes of stuff. So there it is. There's my list of 100 in honor of reaching 100 subscribers on the channel. So thank you everyone for watching this video and every video and just donating your time most importantly. So I appreciate you donating 22 and a half minutes of your time now or whatever the final edit turns out to be. That's all I have for you folks. Thanks everyone for watching and take care.